Across the table, I've got a flashlight aimed right at my face. Right here, I've got a pocket mirror mounted inside of a lens shade. I'm going to put the mirror on the end of my camera because I want to do a simple little test, the results of which I think you'll find very surprising. Now, I'll line things up so the beam of the flashlight hits the mirror, bouncing the light onto the wall. Now, any movement of the camera will cause the spot of light to move, but I don't want that spot of light to move. That's what this test is all about. I want to see how steadily I can handhold this camera. Okay, here I go. Now, remember, any jiggle in that reflection over there means that I'm shaking the camera. And as steadily as I try to hold it, no matter what, it still seems to be moving a little bit. Let me stop talking for a second and see how I do. I don't know. But now the acid test. I'm going to press the shutter release and see what happens. Well, as you can see, with me hand holding the camera, there's no way I'll be as steady as I could be. I mean, as quiet as I try to be, there's not a chance that I'll be 100% rock solid. This is a good way for you to practice your hand holding techniques. What does it take? A flashlight and a mirror? But you know, there's no way that you'll ever be as rock steady hand holding the camera as you'll be with a tripod. That's kind of an interesting demonstration, a fun way to practice hand holding your camera. But just how important is it to have your camera rock steady when you're taking a picture? Two answers. Not very important and very important. It's not very important when you're using a fast shutter speed and, say, a normal or a wide angle lens. It's very important when you're using a slow shutter speed, a 60th of a second or less, and you've got a macro or telephoto lens on your camera. So in those instances where your camera absolutely needs a firm base of support, you ought to think about getting a tripod just like this one. You know, a lot of professionals use a tripod no matter what, no matter what shutter speed they're using or what lens happens to be on the front of their cameras. About the only times uh, many professionals don't use a tripod is when the subject matter of their shoot happens to be very unpredictable, where they might have to handhold their camera so they can whirl around and be in the right place at the right time. Other times, that camera stays mounted firmly on the top of their tripods. You see, a tripod provides you with more than stability, although that's very important. A tripod provides you with repeatability. Once the camera's locked down on the tripod and the shot's all set up, you can change filters, you can change the exposure, you can shift the focus, you can even open up the back of the camera to change the film if need be. All that can be done without disturbing that original shot. You should have a tripod, you've decided you need to get one, but how do you choose a tripod? Basically, as the price increases, the tripods become easier to use, much more versatile, a lot sturdier, but you may not need to spend a whole lot of money. You've got to decide what you're going to use your tripod for. I mean, if you're going backpacking, you don't want to take along a tripod that weighs a lot, looks like it's been made to military specifications. All you want is a lightweight, portable camera platform. That's really all a tripod is. If, on the other hand, you have a lot of heavy equipment, maybe a couple of real long lenses, you're going to want to look for a tripod that's a lot more heavy duty and, and very durable as well. What you have to look for in a tripod is to make sure it has enough movement options to let you angle your camera in on the shot that you want to get. You've got to be concerned with tilt, the up and down motion of the camera, pan, the left and right motion of the camera, and the horizon to make sure the camera is perfectly level with the ground so that your pictures don't come out looking all crooked. I've got handles here for pan and tilt. If I turn the tilt handle counterclockwise to the left, here's an easy way to remember it, left to loosen, that loosens the control. It allows me to adjust the framing when you slide through the camera. When I've got it just right, I tighten that handle up right to tight. Easy way to remember that. The axis is locked in. And I can loosen up the handle that controls pan. Frame it up, lock that one down. And I can fine tune the shot now, making sure that the horizon's level. When it is, lock that one down too. Now I'm set. If I want to take a 15th of a second exposure, for instance, of these lobster traps, I don't have to worry about the camera moving. And for that matter, with my camera mounted on a tripod, I could take an eight hour exposure if I wanted to. For instance, shoot the stars all night. Camera won't move. The only thing I do have to worry about is inducing some camera motion when I hit the shutter release. How to get around that? Basically, there are two ways. We've talked about one of these ways before. That's use the old reliable cable release right there on top of the camera. Shoot it and your hands are nowhere near. Another way to keep your hands nowhere near the camera is by using the self timer. You set it, hit the shutter release. When the shot is actually fired, your hands are nowhere near the camera. 
This tripod can get the camera off the ground about five feet, and that's without using the center column. You should always get your height by extending the legs fully instead of using the center column. What that means is you probably should not leave the legs locked up and try to raise the camera using this column because the tripod just won't be as stable. Look how stable it is with the legs fully extended. Another thing, there's no law that says you've got to keep all three legs extended at the same length. For instance, I'm standing right here and one of the legs is in a little bit of a depression. So as you can see, the tripod's not exactly level. What do I do? Just lower one leg a little bit. Puts that camera just perfectly. Adjust the horizon. I've got a good shot of you framed up right here. When you're lengthening or shortening the tripod legs, be careful not to over-tighten these leg extension knobs. That is the number one tripod problem. I mean, if they're too loose, your tripod's going to sink during your shot. Very embarrassing. If they're too tight, first of all, you're going to risk ripping your hands the next time you need to pull your legs out. Plus, you risk stripping these things. You don't want to do that. That'll ruin a tripod real fast. What you do is you have to develop a feel for your tripod. There's one more thing on the end of a tripod right here, protective feet. Now I've got the spikes out because I want them to set in the dirt very well, provide stability. But if you go inside, you can just inch them up a little bit and provide a rubber coating that'll protect your hardwood floors and provide non-skid feet for your tripod. Right now, I've got my camera and lens mounted on the tripod, but if you have a lens that weighs more than your camera, well, there's something else you do with a tripod. Let's move on to another location. I'll show you what I mean. Oh, I see the sun has come out. It's turned into a real nice day. I stopped by the car, pick up a couple of pieces of equipment, because I want to show you what to do with that big lens I just mentioned. All right, let's once again make sure that our tripod is all sturdy, stood up well. All right. This is a 350 millimeter lens. As you can see, it's good and large. What you do when you've got a lens this heavy, you actually mount the lens to the tripod. That's why all good telephoto lenses like this have a tripod mount. Let's just say you put the camera on the tripod, you mounted the lens onto the camera. Think of all that extra unsupported weight hanging out there. It could damage this bayonet mount right here and actually shift the point of focus. Now let me spin this around so that you can see it a little better. Remember, when you're mounting a big heavy lens like this, try to position one leg, this one right here, underneath the lens, extra support on your tripod. You know, a tripod is not exactly a decorator item, but you'll notice that my tripod is black. My camera body is black, for that matter. Those dark colors tend to attract less attention. They're less conspicuous. And if you're into wildlife photography, for instance, you know, if you're outside a lot in the foliage, you might try to get a green tripod. They come in various different colors, and you kind of want to just blend in with your background. But no matter what colored tripod you use, you can bet that a tripod is going to make you a more precise, a much more stable photographer. And with the help of your self-timer, you can perform a feat of magic. Well, that's a nice shot. You can be in two places at once.